Hello and welcome to my Hack Shack located right here in Los Angeles. My name is Johnny and I support horror. This week I watched a movie called One BR or One Bedroom that uh, resonated with me to an extent. It's about a girl who moves to Hollywood to start the new life and she moves into a basic slightly crummy apartment complex. I did the same thing about 11 years ago. I packed my Honda Civic up with as much stuff as I could and drove out to LA. I moved to Hollywood in a very sketchy apartment complex and neighborhood uh, where I believe in the lease I had to sign of the apartment complex, I had to agree that I wouldn't bring prostitutes into the building. I remember sitting down with the manager of the building and signing the lease and I'm like, well, there goes my social life. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I've come a long way in my 11 years of uh, living in Los Angeles and uh, that time when I lived in that crappy apartment in Hollywood, it was actually pretty cool. It was scary, a little scary, but uh, it was fun, right? So let's see if our main character can cut it in Hollywood, shall we? One BR is a thriller horror movie written and directed by David Marmer. This is David's feature debut and only had a handful of shorts before doing this one. Our main character, Sarah, played by Nicole Bryden Bloom, this is her first feature as well. She's a fresh face, has only done four small projects before starring in One BR. So the storyline goes something like this. Uh, Sarah is new to Los Angeles, like I said, and is pursuing a career in costume design. She's currently working in a soulless temp job and living in a seedy motel while she's looking for a more permanent place to live. She sees a listing for an apartment that looks promising, so she decides to go to the open house and see for herself. While there, Sarah gets a little discouraged seeing everyone applying to this place and almost leaves before the landlord, Jerry, encourages her to apply. Great news! Sarah gets the apartment and uh, notices while she's moving in just how tight-knit the community is there. And everybody Everybody in that community wants her to stay and be a part of it so badly that they will do anything, and I mean anything, to make her stay. This is a fun flick to watch when you're not expecting much, because it is better than you think it's going to be, at least in my opinion. First of all, I have to talk about the people in this creepy community within the complex channeled Scientology so much. I pretty much just have surface level knowledge about Scientology, but after watching that HBO doc going clear and doing my own research and, and finding out how much abuse and brainwashing goes on there, I just thought about how well that fit within this movie. I'll give you some examples that relates to the plot. Brainwashing. They try to convince Sarah that within those walls, within the community, it's the perfect world and everything else on the outside of that, outside the walls, in the street, out in the city, is full of impure, selfish people that live an empty life. Torture. Not saying that they do torture within the walls of Scientology. Maybe psychological torture? I don't know. Don't quote me. <laughs> Please, Tom Cruise, I'm begging you, if you ever see this video, do not assassinate me. Don't come near me, bro. I need to see you in Top Gun 2 first. Anyway, there is a method of torture that they use in this movie that makes a lot of sense. It is unique and effective, and after a while, I would probably conform to their wishes too. Disconnecting, an actual term in Scientology where a person cuts ties with someone who's not a Scientologist uh, because the fear is that they would get in their way of making spiritual progress. In this movie, they have a very creepy and clever way of making Sarah cut ties with the outside world. And it's later on in the movie that Sarah uh, gets to witness how they actually do it. And finally, just like how Scientology follows a book uh, called Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard, uh, this community in 1BR follows a book called The Power of Community. The book tells them how they can become a community free of loneliness, poverty, and strife. So the creep factor in this movie is off the charts. Think about entering this safe haven where you think everything is safe, everyone is your friend, but when you figure out that there's something wrong, there is nowhere to go. People will just stifle your cries and will not let you leave. Sounds awesome, right? Let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about the performance of Nicole Bridenbloom as Sarah. She played the soft-spoken but strong uh, new girl in a big city role well. What I think she did best at was how she had to pretend to be a part of this 
creepy community. Giving the illusion that she's happy, going along with a program, and uh, promises that she's not going to flee once they let her outside. And there are little moments where you wonder if she has been brainwashed, because there are ways this community tests you uh, to see if you've been lying or not. And there are times where she's so close to freedom, but she has to turn it down, and as a viewer, you're like, no, come on, like it's right there. But you will see why she can't escape at that moment, and you just, uh, you, you feel bad for her. The first act hooks you in. Uh, it does a good job at keeping you intrigued as you have all these questions. Where did these people come from? How or why was she targeted to live there? Here was a big question for me. Why the hell is everyone there always? all the time. Do these people have jobs? Uh, they're always eating together uh, in the courtyard and being very civil to one another, like one big happy family. That would have been a big red flag for me right there. I don't know about you, but I've lived in many apartment complexes since I was 18 years old. I think I've lived in three or four different ones in Los Angeles alone. And I'll tell you one thing, nobody is ever around. So yeah, back to the story. Uh, the first act has you asking all these questions, lots of questions. Uh, those questions are then answered in the second act. Then you have the third act that shows us if Sarah is ever going to be able to leave. And I personally like how they ended the movie. You get to see the big picture of it all uh, as it took quite a while to reveal just what the hell was going on. Give one BR a shot. Uh, I think that this movie is good, but also just keep in mind that this is the first feature film of the director writer as well as the star. Okay, horror fam, I'm gonna go into hiding for a little bit as I believe that Scientologists will be after me uh, once they see this video comes out. Hey, thanks again for coming by my channel, watching this video, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I hope you do so right now, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. And let's be friends to the end, people. You know you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Horror Hack. Once again, my name is Johnny. Keep supporting horror, and this has been one hack of a show.